Namaste everyone and welcome to today's yoga class. Um, we're going to be doing a practice primarily focusing on opening up um, the hips but maintaining some integrity and stability in the hips. Um, so getting some space, some physical space and some emotional space. Um, now don't be surprised, don't be alarmed, don't be frightened or freaked out if at the end of this practice or during this practice you notice emotions bubbling up. Um, our hips are, there is a bit, it's a big muscle group and um, in that big muscle group we hold a lot of physical tension and as we release physical tension we are also able to release emotional tension, worries, fears, anxiety, joy, so things might bubble up, all sorts of crazy emotions that you didn't even know were there might bubble up over the practice, or it might just feel like a really good stretch. Um, so whatever this means to you, hope you enjoy this class today. Now, you might want to have a, a strap or a belt or a piece of rope or a jumper, something to hand that you can hook around your foot if your hamstrings are feeling a little bit tight or if your hips are feeling a little bit tight today. So a strap, Perhaps a block to sit on, for those of you with tight hip flexors, sitting on a block does help. So we're going to start midway back on our mat today, or about a third of the way back on our mat, sitting with our legs crossed in any comfortable position, finding a space and letting your hands rest, just less rest lightly in your lap. Close your eyes. Let's all just take a moment together to breathe and to settle. Just find out what is going on for us right now. Where are you right now? begin to notice sounds around you, perhaps begin to notice sensations in your body, perhaps already sitting in this position becomes uncomfortable or tight, so feel free to adjust your position or perhaps you feel like you're relaxed and you're calm. Notice how your breath flows. There's a movement to the air around you, not just within you, but the air around you displaces and moves as you breathe in and you breathe out. So you need to feel that. And perhaps if you feel ready to now, you can start to lengthen and deepen your breath. Breathing in and out through your nose unless it feels uncomfortable, in which case breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth is okay. Find an ease to your breath. An easy, relaxed rhythm with minimal effort, minimal need and want to control. But there is a depth your breath and with each breath there is a broadening an increasing sense of space in your body and for those of you familiar with ujjayi breath the throaty sound of your breath please do join in now with some ujjayi pranayama if not have a go at contracting the back of your throat and just making a raspy sound with your breath. As if you were steaming up a window, but with your lips closed as you breathe in and out. And 
perhaps for the focus of your practice today, you can remind yourself now that you are okay with whoever you are. Whatever comes of your practice today is just right, just as it should be. I will accept who I am and where I am in this moment. And when you're ready to, you can open your eyes and extend your legs out in front of you. I want to start singing from The Greatest Showman then. <laughs> so extending your legs out in front of you. Moving the flesh backwards from your buttocks. We've all got it. So sit on the front edge of your sit bones so that you can use core strength to be upright. Flex, dorsiflex your feet. So pull your toes back towards your shins. Spread your toes. And give your toes a little bit of a wiggle. If you need to here, you might want to lean back into your hands a little bit. If you find it tricky to sit upright or sit yourself up on a block, absolutely fine. But if you want to use a little bit of hip flexor strength, see if you can sit upright. Now your feet can be as wide as your mat. And we're just going to start to circle our ankles, doing some power mukhasana, starting in the lower extremity circling the ankles, keeping the toes spreading, and then reach your arms up in front of you. Gentle fists and circle your wrists. See if you can coordinate the two. Can you move your fists in different directions to your ankles? <laughs> I like to challenge you. Oh gosh, that's hard. <laughs> can you do it? And change in direction as many times as you like. If you've got this, today my coordination is all over the place. If you come to my classes, you know I like to challenge coordination and proprioception. And then relax, ease off there. Pulling your toes back towards your shins, equally the outside edge of your foot to the inside edge of your foot. So not just the inside edge of your feet, pulling the whole of your foot back to your shins squeeze your toes and then release and spread squeeze your toes and release and spread one more time squeeze your toes and release and spread bring your right knee in towards you with your right foot on the floor and just interlace your hands or hold on to you at the back of your right thigh you can lean back a little bit here keeping shoulders away from you nice long spine so belly drawing in we're just going to do a few swings, just gentle, relaxed swings of the right knee. Not too much effort going involved with the muscles, just a gentle swing. The foot can be relaxed at the start. Then we're going to start to bring in some muscle toe. Extend, flex the foot, bend, draw the knee to the chest. Extend, flex the foot, press into the heel, bend, draw the knee to the chest. One more time, extend and bend. Now we're going to check out the range of motion in the knee. So there is a little bit of circular motion to the knee joint, not a lot because your hip is moving here as well, but there's a little bit of movement in the knee joint. And these little simple exercises, really good practice to do to get the synovial fluid circulating around the joint, lubricating our joints. Good thing to do at the beginning of the day. Or if you've been sitting for a long time. Lovely. And then placing your foot flat down onto the floor again. We're going to grab hold of a strap. Now, some of you will need a strap, some of you won't. So if your hamstrings are feeling a little bit tight today, I'd like you to put the strap around the ball of your right foot and take the two ends of the strap into your right hand with your left hand behind you. Your left leg comes back into the midline and the toes point up to the ceiling. We're going to hold on to the strap or for those of you that can, you hot take two fingers inside the, between the big toe and second toe and thumb on the first the big, top of the big toe. And we're going to lift the foot up. And we're just going to 
see what it feels like to bend and straighten the knee, bringing it forwards and backwards. So if you've got your strap, you go forwards and backwards, lengthening the strap. You've got a big toe, kind of keep your right shoulder pulling back, just checking in, kind of like a half happy baby type movement with the knee, love. And then bring the foot, the right foot across, resting it on the left thigh, just above the left knee. One of my favorite things to do, I love playing with my feet. So with your left fingers now, I'd like you to see if you can slide each of your fingers between a toe, between your toes on your left foot. So you're literally, it's like you're holding hands with your own foot. Now, if that doesn't happen, quite completely, then you can just kind of slip the fingertips into the gaps between the toes. If you've got your fingers all the way in, great. Hold on to the foot, give it a squeeze. Remind yourself that you are there, it's real. And I'm gonna use the hand to rotate the ankle. Being kind to your ankle, to your foot. Little clicks, the odd click is okay, changing direction. Well. And then the knee. And you can bring your fingers out with a little flourish and your toes might feel a little bit more open. Hold on with your left hand to the outside of your right foot and hold on to your right knee with your right hand. If it's appropriate, can you gently pick your shin up off your left thigh? Might be a lot, might be a little bit, that's fine. See if you can flex, really important actually, to flex the right foot, particularly the outside edge of the right foot. Good. And then we're just gonna draw the knee forwards and backwards, like you're rocking a baby. If you have a little bit more flexibility, you might be able to bring the outside edge of the left foot into the crook of the, the right foot, into the crook of the left arm wrapping your right arm around your right knee, still sitting up tall and rocking from side to side. Keeping the foot flexed, just checking in with your range of movement. There are all sorts of places you can go, but for today, this is where we're staying. And then release on that rocking. And we're gonna take, bring the right hand, right fingers back into the inside of the big toe or holding onto the outside edge of the foot, or taking the strap around the ball of the right foot and bringing the right foot around to the front and extending the right leg straight again. From here, left hand is on the left thigh or down beside us so you can lower down onto your left elbow. Use your tummy muscles though, lowering back, keeping your left thigh grounded. Let your spine slowly relax down to the floor. So both shoulders, both shoulder blades are connected to the floor. You're extending up through your right heel and you're creating resistance. So you're trying to pull your right heel up and away from you a little bit so you can feel your hamstrings activate at the same time as lengthen. Lovely. Breathing into this stretch. And then either keeping hold of the big toe, the outside of the foot, or the strap. The left hand stays on the left thigh, weighting it down, and your right leg can drop. Any amount, it doesn't have to go far, out to the right. Turning your, toe, your heel up to the ceiling if you can. Maybe turning your head to look over your left shoulder. I find that helps me to ground down the left side of my body. Lovely, you're still with me, you're still breathing. On an inhale, bring your right leg all the way back up. Bend your right knee, placing your hands around the back of your right thigh. So you're sandwiching your hands between the back of your calf and your thigh. And you can draw your knee towards your chest. Take a couple of deep breaths into the right side of your belly. Out 
Activate your feet again, so flex both feet. Take an inhale here. And on an exhale, press your right foot forwards in order to lift you up to seated. And we're going to step the right foot to the outside of the left leg. Release your hands. If you've got tangled up in a strap, just move your strap off to one side. Little bit of a funky transition now. So bring your left hand, unusual, it's not, you're not going where we think we're going to go. Bring your left hand out behind you. And see if you can walk your right foot around, so you're going to roll onto the left hip and walk your right hip around to the left side of your mat a little bit. Press the outside edge of your left foot into the floor. Press into your right foot, your right knee is pointing straight up to the ceiling. And reach your right arm up, lifting your hip, coming into a Vasistasana variation. So just adjust your position so that you have a nice 90 degree angle with your right knee, your left hip is lifted, left shoulder is over left wrist, you're pressing into the outside edge of your left foot, right arm reaches first up, and then on an exhale, reach your right hand to the back of your mat, turning your palm to face down. Imagine you're stretching and reaching for something, press into your right foot, keep the breath deep and full, and then slowly reach your right arm back around in front of you, lower your hips, keeping your right foot on the left side of your leg. Wrap your left arm around your right knee and bring your right arm out behind you. This is where you thought we were going to go probably into our twist. twist. The left toes are flexed, the right foot presses into the floor, hugging the right knee to the chest. Gently twisting from the mid thoracic spine, not the lumbar spine. So pulling the right hip forward, the left hip back. And then inhale back to the front. Release your hands, step your right foot back into a neutral position. Just give your right, right knee a little bit of a rub. And then extend your right leg out straight. And let's do exactly the same on the other side. So we're going to bring, I don't remember what we're doing now. We're going to bend the left knee in towards us. Hold on behind the back of the left thigh. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. The right foot is flexed, toes are spreading. And we're just going to do a few gentle swings. Left leg swinging. And we'll bring in a little bit of muscle tone, flexion and extension. Use your breath. Inhale, exhale, squeeze it in. Inhale, extend through the heel. Exhale, bend the knee, squeeze into the chest. One more. Inhale, extend through the heel. Exhale, bend and squeeze. One more. This time, we're going to cross the ankle over the left knee. Let the, over the right knee, sorry, let the left knee relax down. Take the right hand and see if you can get your right fingers inside, in between your toes. So it might be a little bit of a squash and a squeeze initially, but when you get there, it, it actually feels quite good. And then literally hold hands with your foot, give it a squeeze. As if you were giving someone's hand a squeeze who you really loved. Imagine you're holding the hand of a loved one who you haven't seen for a while and you just want to give them a squeeze. It's the same with your feet. You don't often squeeze your own feet. And then we're just going to use that grasp of our foot to rotate the ankle. Being kind, being generous, being loving. And sometimes it's nice to watch the movement of the skin, the tendons, the veins, and the changing direction. We'll go outside this evening. And then ease off on your circling in with your little flourish, you can move your fingers out the way. 
we're going to go for our extension again. So taking the right foot into the, the right, the left foot even, into the right hand and the left knee into the left hand. Pick up the shin, even if it's just a little bit, keeping the spine long, keeping the left foot flexed. We're going to rock the leg side to side. And for some of you, if you can go there, if you feel you've got the flexibility today, you can come for more of a foot into the crook of the elbow. But it makes it a different stretch. So what do you need today? Even if you can do this one, sometimes it just feels very different to stretch your leg out further away from you. You, you get different sensations. So please feel free to pause the video, experiment with this. And we're going to ease off on our rocking. Bring our left hand either to the big toe outside of the foot or get your strap around the foot. And we'll do a few extensions and flexions. This time we're taking it a little bit further, drawing the knee back towards or even past the armpit, keeping the spine long. And then when you're ready to, extending that leg, either holding on to the big toe, strap outside edge of the foot. The right hand can be on the right thigh or you can use your right elbow to support you on your way down. Lift your spine, use your tummy muscles and as you exhale, contract the belly and slowly, if you can, whoop, roll yourself down to the floor. Extending through your left heel, trying to pull your foot out of your hand or out of your strap so you feel engagement in the hamstring. So they're strengthening and stretching. Active stretching. Look for breathing, your jai breath. And then gently allow the left leg to open out to the left. Any amount, it might be a few degrees. Some of you might get the foot to the floor and think, oh, I'm there, but you're rolling like this. Well, this isn't twisting. This isn't opening the hip. This is rolling onto your side. So if that happens, grab your strap. No reason to be proud. Let your hip open as much as is comfortable for you. It doesn't have to be way out in the air. Right hip is heavy and grounded, rolling out to the right even. And you're breathing, you're relaxed in your jaw. If you're clenching your jaw, you're trying really hard to keep this position, so come out of it a little bit. And then inhale, lift the left leg all the way up. Get rid of your strap. Bend your left knee. Again, over your hands. So you're sandwiching your hands behind your calf and thigh and draw the left thigh towards your chest, relaxing your shoulders. And take about two or three really deep breaths into your belly. Feeling your belly expand and press against your thigh. Flex both feet, take an inhale, and as you exhale, press your thigh into your hands and come up to seated and cross your left foot over to the right hand side of your mat. Bring your right hand out behind you, fingers point to the back of the mat, roll onto the right hip to turn your whole body to face the right. Roll onto the outside edge of your right foot, Maybe walk your left foot around in front of you a little bit more. So your left foot is pointing straight off to the left. On an inhale, press into the outside edge of your left foot, right foot, the whole of your left foot and your right hand and lift your hips, lift your left arm up. Adjust your position, so, so shoulder is over wrist. Lovely. 90 degree angle at the knee. 
and then take the left arm and reach it over the head as if you're stretching from your right heel into your fingers, turn your palm to face down. Really feel the stretch. Feel the space as you breathe. And then exhale, lowering the hips, letting the left foot slide slightly towards the right thigh. Left foot is flat to the floor. Wrap the right arm around the left thigh and bring your left arm out behind you. Coming into your twist. Again, if you need to sit on a block, that's absolutely fine. If having the foot on the opposite side of the leg is too much, have the foot on the inside of the leg. You can still achieve the twist, having your foot inside, on the inside of your right leg. Moving your belly around behind your thigh. Relax your shoulders, realign your hips, so pulling your right hip back, left hip forwards, lifting through the pelvic floor, lift the belly muscles back towards the spine. Deep, full breaths. And inhale to turn your head back to centre, release everything. And bring your feet flat to the floor with your knees bent. Reach your chest towards your knees. Your knees point up to the ceiling. Press your feet together. Reach your arms forwards. And then start to slowly round your spine, rolling yourself back. Keep your feet pressing into the floor. Don't let them lift. Move slower than you want to. Keep breathing. Keep smiling. I'm with you. I'm with you. Keep going. We're not there yet. We're not down yet. If you've landed, come back up a little bit. Keep breathing, keep using those tummy muscles, keep pressing into your feet. And then slowly lower down, stretch your arms out above your head and walk your feet a little bit closer to your bottom. With your arms lifting up above your head, press into your feet, engage your buttocks and lift your hips. Using the squeeze of the bum muscles to lift your hips. Pressing your shoulders into the floor, tops of your shoulders. Relaxing your arms, so letting your elbows bend a little bit here. One more breath. Squeeze your feet towards your bum. And then exhale, slowly peeling your spine down to the floor. One vertebra at a time. Bringing your arms down by your sides with your palms face down. Lift, zip your legs together and lift your legs to vertical. Point your toes up towards the ceiling. Again, engaging your tummy muscles. See if we can take our toes slightly overhead and lift your hips off the floor. Using your tummy muscles, pointing your toes about 45 degrees out behind you so it's not a full shoulder stand. Take a deep breath in. And then on an exhale, we're going to use momentum to roll ourselves up into a Navasana, a boat pose. So knees can be bent, hands can be holding onto the thighs, or legs can be straight and you can be reaching forwards. One more breath. Cross your legs at your shins. A bit of shaking is all good. <laughs> Bring your hands to the floor. Roll onto your knees if it's appropriate. Unravel your legs. Bring your toes, you can't see any strands, but bring your big toes to touch. Walk your hands forwards a little bit so that you can then tuck your toes under. So all your toes are tucked under, the balls of the feet, I'm falling over, the balls of the feet are together and the knees are down. And then bring your hands, can you see my feet and my trousers? Yes. There you go, there are my toes. So bring your hands to rest on your knees. We're having a little bit of a toe stretch now, preparing our feet. For a pose we're going to do a bit later on. So relax your shoulders, all the weight is dropping down through shoulders, hips, stretching out those toes and you're opening your hips. Belly is lifted. Lovely. I've got my nice cozy warm jumper on today so excuse the comfy look <laughs> when at home. And then bring your hands back down to the floor Lift up onto your toes, bring your knees together. Hands flat to the floor, take an inhale 
And as you exhale, start to lift your bum, keeping your knees together. Your hands might lift, coming into a forward fold. Doesn't matter if your legs don't straighten. Maybe take your heels apart a little bit, but keep the big toe mounds touching. Folding over your legs, letting your arms dangle and relax, give your shoulders a shake out. Lift, see if you can lift your belly away from your thighs a little bit. Bend your knees super, super deep. Inhale, lift your chest, lift your arms, Utkatasana. Pull your knees back so you can see your big toes, upper arms by the ears. And then inhale, straighten the legs, hands to the heart. Tadasana, lovely. So coming to the front of your mat, you're going to do a little mini half vinyasa to get to a little standing sequence that we, or a kneeling sequence that we're going to do. So rolling your shoulders down and back, standing up nice and tall. Take an inhale, reach your arms up and sit back into your chair pose. As you exhale, lower your hands straight and your legs fold. Inhale, lift your chest, come into a flat back position. Exhale, bend your knees, plant your hands, step straight back to down dog. Stretching out in down dog. Just checking in, how do your hamstrings feel? How does the connection with your hands and the floor feel? Rolling your armpits towards each other. Relax neck, lifting the sit bones, lifting the belly. Try not to collapse in the chest. Taking an inhale, lifting the right leg up into the air behind you, trying to keep your hips neutral. So we're not lifting and rolling the right hip up, keeping the hips neutral. One more breath. And then exhale, see if you can swing or step your right foot in between your hands. Lower your back knee down. Inhale, reach your arms up, bring your palms together. Sink into your hips, reach up through your hands. Your, neck, your head can be looking forwards or if it's your neck's okay, you can look up. Squeezing your front heel back and your back knee forwards, bringing you some stability into the hips. And then exhale, bringing your hands down and bring your right hand down to the inside of your right foot. Walk your right foot way off your mat and bring your hands under your shoulders. So your right foot is quite wide. I'm going to untuck my back toes here, but if it's more comfortable to have them tucked, that's fine for you. And we're just going to move, making some circles here. So as you circle, I would like you to just Close your eyes and feel into this movement. Do you need to lift your right toes? Do you need to keep them grounded, changing direction? Not rushing past the juicy bits, the tight bits tendency we'll all have. Oh, that doesn't feel good. I won't stay there very long. And coming back to a neutral position and your foot is still out to the side, but draw your hips back and lift your right toes. When we come up here, we're going to come into an Ardha Hanumanasana posture, half splits pose, but the leg is out to the side, so it's a little bit different. Lift the toes, pull the Toes back to the shin, reach the arms forward. The back thigh is vertical and the chest is drawing towards the floor. Lovely. Reaching your arms. You can take your arms as wide as your mat coming up into fingertips. Press your right heel into the floor and imagine you're trying to drag your heel towards you. Can you feel that extra activation? through the back of the calf, the hamstrings, and the inside of the quadricep. Lovely. Now slide forwards and tuck your back toes under, tuck the left toes under. We're gonna walk ourselves back, 
slide the right foot all the way to the top or the back bottom <laughs> right corner of your mat and sit your left buttock on your left heel your right leg is out to the right you're going to take chin mudra with your thumb and first finger rest the outside edges of your wrists on the insides of your knees lift your spine sitting in hanuman's seat turn your head to look off the back of your mat tuck your tailbone under i know it's intense on your left toes so if it's too much either sit on a block or untuck your toes lift through the crown of the head feel light in your seat and then turn to the front of the mat slide your hands forwards the left hand particularly is going to slide forwards we're going to bring the outside edge we're going to roll onto the outside edge of the left foot lift the hip and stack the right foot on top of the left lift the right arm coming into a full vasistasana once you've found your pose bring your right arm forwards little finger is spinning towards the ground so your right tricep is turning around towards the ground you're wrapping your serratus anterior muscle around and forward reaching forward through your right fingers reaching back through your right heel one more breath and then lower your right hand to the floor lift your hips up and back have a good stretch and a long down dog well done find your breath walk out your dog and when you're ready lift your left leg up into the air behind you inhaling lifting your left leg up keeping your hips level so again we're not lifting the left hip head is relaxed toes point down to the floor breathing into the lift on an exhale gently swing or step your left foot forwards between your hands and lower your right knee settle yourself into your lunge inhale reach your arms up and jolly asana palms together reach up through your fingers upper arms by the ears right hip pulls forward left hip pulls back tailbone tucks under either looking up with a little bit of a back bend or looking forwards whatever feels good for you smiling and then exhaling bring the hands down on the inside of the left foot creeping the left foot way off your mat bending the left knee into a kind of a spider shaped lunge untuck the back toe here so you can take some pressure off the back knee and we again close your eyes and move your hips around in circles as if you're stirring a pot with your hips noticing how your breath encourages the movement and works with the movement changing direction be aware of the weight distribution in your hands as you circle around over them playing with lifting and lowering your left toes and slowly making your way back to a neutral position and drawing your hips backwards and lifting your left toes taking your hands as wide as your mat coming up onto fingertips drawing the shoulder blades together and sitting the hips back pulling the left toes back towards the shin pressing the left heel into the floor and it's a sensation that you're trying to drag your heel towards you I believe that the splits aren't for everyone but we can certainly get the same benefits from the posture by doing different variations of the split 
So activate the quads, lift the kneecaps, and you get more of a stretch down the hamstring. And then lift the chest. Walk your hands back in towards you slightly, so you've got a bit of weight through your hands. Tuck your right toes under this time, all five of those right toes, including the little toe. Bring your left foot around, walk your left foot around to the bottom left corner of your mat. Sit your right buttock on your right heel. Chin mudra with both hands, so thumb and forefinger touch, palms facing upwards. Press, let gently resting the outsides of your wrists and the insides of your thighs. And turn to look over your left shoulder. Tailbone tucks. I appreciate it's a toe stretch. We get release in a moment. Breathe. Turn your head back to the front. Come off your toe. Oh, there's the blood flow. <laughs> Bring your right hand down to the floor. Slide your right leg out straight, press into your right hand so you can come to the outside edge of your right foot, right shoulder over right wrist, stack the left foot on top of the right, lift your left arm up, come into your side plank, your vastistasana. Once you're set up in your posture, feet are flexed, reach your left arm forward, little finger turns towards the floor, reaching out through your fingers reaching out through the crown of your head, reaching out through your heels. Imagine you're being pulled in two different directions, but it feels so good. And then lower your left hand to the floor, roll back into your plank, come into a down dog. Pedal out your down dog. Forwards, back into a plank, and then let your hips slowly lower to the floor, releasing your shoulder blades together, bending your elbows if you need to, untucking your toes, stretching your belly, stretching the front of your body. If this is too strong on your back, come down a little lower, take your arms a little wider. Totally up to you, or even come into a sphinx pose for a bit more support. Just want to stretch the front of the body for one more breath and then press back to all fours. Come to a neutral all four position. Cross your ankles at your shins and roll over to sit. Now there's a wall behind me so I'm going to shuffle forwards a little bit but if you've got space that's fine. I'm going to sit on the front edge of the sit bones and after we've rolled to sit, we unravel our legs, extending our legs into Navasana, boat pose. Reaching out through your toes, reach your arms forwards, or hold onto the backs of the legs and bend your knees. Up to you which variation you go for. And then bring your legs back down to the floor. Extend both legs out straight. Take your right foot and cross it above the left ankle. Bend your left knee and see, please be very careful here, see how it feels to come into our fire log pose. Now I think we've done this before. So the aim of this posture is to get ankle on top of knee and knee on top of ankle. If that's not happening, keep the left leg straight or come to a simple sukhasana, simple cross leg posture with the right leg in front. So see how it feels for you. Bring your arms out wide, stretch into your fingers. And then as you exhale, cross the right arm underneath the left. And either hold on to your elbows and draw, oh, shoulders and draw your elbows forwards and up, or come into your eagle bind. Backs of the hands together or palms together. Reach your forearms away from you. Feel the stretch through your shoulders. Take an inhale. And if it feels comfortable, you might choose to fold over your legs, keeping your feet flexed, reaching your fingertips forwards as, a, as opposed to just coming straight down. So reach forwards. So for those of you who love a pigeon, this is a beautiful one. Press the right sit bones down into the floor. Oh, 
by all means, if that's too much, you stay up here with your arm lifted. Taking one more breath, lifting belly away from the space between the thighs. And as you inhale, lift up, unravel your arms, unravel your legs. Come back into your boat pose. Reach through your fingers, reach through your toes, lift your chest. And then cross your legs the other way. If you can, can you do it in midair? <laughs> so this time the left ankle is stacked on top of the right. And the left knee is on the top of the right ankle. And again, if that doesn't happen, if you're up here, that's okay. As long as it doesn't feel like anything's being strained. If your knee feels like it's got strain on it, you can put a block underneath your knee. Or I would come to here, where it's a little bit less intense. Or Sukhasana with the left leg in front. You choose the appropriate variation for you. This one is strong. So very important to flex your feet. Please, please, please. Take your arms out wide. This time the left arm is going to cross underneath the right. Either hold onto shoulders and reach your elbows away from you, or take your eagle bind. Reach your fingers up and away from you and you choose. Do I stay here? Or do I want to exhale? Reach forwards. There it is. Pressing the left glute into the floor. Ooh. Stretching the outer hips. Lifting belly away from side. And we're also giving the tops of our shoulders and upper back a nice opening, some space. As you inhale, lifting up. One last one. Re unravel your arms, unravel your legs. Come into your Navasana. Take three deep breaths. One. Two. Imagine you're offering something up with your palms facing upwards. Three. Bend your knees, lower your feet to the floor. And come to lying down on your mats. Make your way to lie down semi supine so the knees are going to stay bent. Bring your arms down by your sides. And lift your legs to vertical again. So we have a 90 degree angle going on at the hips here. Palms are facing down. Now, if it's accessible to you, we're going to lift up into a half shoulder stand without using too much momentum. We're going to try and use our tummy muscles. If not, I'd like you to stay here. Engaging the tummy muscles, pulling the, lower, uh, pulling the belly button towards the low back. If it's accessible to you, reach up through your toes and lift up into a shoulder stand. Once you're up in your shoulder stand, you can bring your hands to your lower back if we're going there. Then I would like you to take your left leg and cross your left leg on top of the right. So the left thigh is closer to your chest. And then either squeeze the left foot to the right shin or wrap the left foot around the right shin, bringing the left knee towards the forehead. So you're in eagle legs, Garudasana legs. Breathing is a bit more tricky now. It's also hard to talk, breathe and be in this posture, so I won't talk too much. Release your hands from your low back. Keep the bind on your legs. You may need to unhook the toes from behind the shin. And slowly lower your bum back down to the floor, bringing your right toes, right foot back to the floor. If you can keep the bind on the legs, great. Take your arms out wide with your palms facing down and let your legs roll over to the right, to the left, sorry, to the left. <laughs> and turn your head to the right. If it feels too much on your knees, unravel your legs and you can just slide your ankle on top of your right knee.
Please be kind to your knees. Unravel your legs. Slide the left leg underneath the right. Bring your legs back into the centre. Press your feet into the floor. Keep your arms wide. Lift your hips up and just let your hips sway from side to side just to realign everything. Then place them down central. Bring your arms back down by your sides again. Palms face down. Legs extend up vertical. You can stay with your bottom on the floor or if you want to, using tummy muscles to lift up through the toes. This time bringing the right knee towards your forehead, crossing the right leg over the left, maybe hooking the right toes around the back of the left shin. The right knee draws towards the forehead. You can bring your hands to rest on your lower back or not. Keep your head still, it's important not to move your neck here, there's a lot of pressure on your neck. And then if it's available to you, keeping your legs crossed or bound as well as you can, slowly, with control, using core strength, rolling back down, landing your left foot to the floor and taking your arms wide, palms face down. On an exhale, let your knees drop over to your right. Turn your head to your left. Nice stretch on the outer hip. If it's too much for your knee, please do unravel the right foot from around the left thigh. You can even bring your knees in a little bit closer towards you if you want. Press the inside edge of your left foot into the floor and then draw it towards your bum activating your hamstring, kind of deepens the stretch in the outer hip. And then unraveling your legs, slide your right leg underneath your left. Inhale back to centre. Take both feet as wide as your mat. Inhale, lift your hips up as high as they can. Take your arms overhead, your feet are wide. Knees point up towards the ceiling. Feel the stretch in the front of the hips. And then slowly exhale. Lower your spine down to the floor. You can sway as you go. Bringing your spine down to the floor. One final little knee hug, one knee at a time in towards the chest. And when you feel ready to, if you feel ready to, lifting your nose up towards your knees, giving your feet a little roll around again, and your toes a little wiggle. And then rolling your head back down to the floor, placing your feet flat on the floor. If you need a bolster or a rolled up blanket underneath your knees, we're going to make our way into Shavasana. So if you need a blanket underneath your knees, please grab one. If you want a blanket or a jumper or socks or a hat or an eye pillow, perhaps pause the pillow video, make yourself comfortable. If your lower back feels a bit pinchy, then something underneath your knees will help. Just lifting your knees up a little bit, that will help. Ideally, not too much pillow under your head because you don't want too much flexion in your neck. You want to keep a nice long neck. When you're comfortable and you've had all the wiggles that you need to, and you feel that your body can be still for a short period of time, just take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold the breath in. Can you sip in a little bit more? And then open your lips and sigh the air out and feel your body just Soften and let go. What was it you were holding on to? We'll do that one more time. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold your breath in. Can you sip in a little bit more through your nose? There's always space for more, even maybe more. 
hold it and then let go through your mouth as if the tension is just dripping out of every pore into the floor you're breathing it away and your whole body just can be still it feels like coming home it feels as if you've been away for a long time and lying down relaxing and knowing that it's safe and it's appropriate to be still is the most blissful feeling you are home there is nowhere else you need to be right now there's nowhere else you should be right now this is home feel cosy you can begin to notice your breath and perhaps begin to take a gentle control of your breath just imperceptible control just knowing that you are breathing in and knowing that you are breathing out begin to feel how it feels to move your fingers and your toes. Notice the wiggles, the stretches, the sounds that are made when you wiggle your fingers, your toes, and perhaps starting to move and stretch into your wrists, your ankles, your arms, your legs. maybe rolling your head from side to side on the floor massaging the back of your head how does that feel how does your neck feel it's trying to wake up your brain as your head moves from side to side even though your eyes are still closed you might still be able to to see through your eyelids the light the play of light as you move your head from side to side and when you're ready to, you can take a toe to fingertip stretch and roll onto one side, whichever side feels right for you today. Just have a moment there to rest, keeping your eyes closed. And then when you're ready, with your eyes still closed, make your way up to any comfortable seated position and bring your palms together at your heart centre. Just remind yourself that this is home, this place right now is home. 
and this is how you are right now and this is how you should be right now there is no need to be anywhere else there is no need to change you are all wonderful amazing human beings so thank you so much for joining me today in my practice namaste